Hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, in this video, I'll be discussing the cephalochordate. I'm going to explain cephalochordate uh, and uh, morphology and feeding of amphioxus. Cephalochordates are nothing but the organisms which are having the chordate features that are the presence of notochord in the nerve cord uh, throughout their body, that is from anterior end to the posterior end of the body. In case of the cephalochordates, uh, we are mainly focusing on the amphioxus. And in this video, we are going to discuss, uh, I mean, I'm going to explain morphology and feeding in amphioxus. Amphioxus. Amphioxus is a, a commonly called the lancet worm, which belongs to phylum chordata, class Labdocardi, and the genus is a brachiostoma. Uh, it is uh, commonly called the amphioxus, otherwise called the lancet worm. Uh, well, uh, we'll discuss the morphology of amphioxus. Amphioxus usually uh, lives in the shallow waters. The whole body of the amphioxus will be buried in the sand whereas the, only the anterior mouth region, which is there in the ventral side of the body will be uh, projected outward so that it can capture the food. So this is how that stays well. Yeah. So this is how the amphioxus will be buried. The whole body of the amphioxus will be buried in the sand and the anterior oracilla, uh, which is there at the ventral side of the body will be projected to the water where it can take up its um, food. When I look into the morphology of amphioxus, the external features of amphioxus. Uh, these brachiostomes are the amphioxus, they can grow up to 3.5 to 6 centimeter in length. And these are the slender, transculent, and the uh, fish-like worms. Uh, these are lateral and laterally compressed organisms. Hence, uh, these are called the lancet worms. So the uh, body of the organism um, body of the amphioxus, there uh, we can see the anterior and the, that will be divided, divisible into or distinguished into anterior and the posterior regions. In case of the anterior end, there is a, a projected protrusion called the rostrum. So the rostrum, uh, bel bel below the rostrum, we can see the oral hood. Yeah, the oral hood, which is a fading organ. Uh, the oral hood is provided with the oral sera numerous small sensory tentacles, slender tentacles, the cirri, oral cirri are there. And the, uh, the anterior and the posterior ends of the body are tapering and it looks like a lancet. So the amphioxus body is mainly divisible into trunk and the tail region. So in the trunk region, uh, we can see the major parts have been concentrated over here, whereas the tail region should be end up with the caudal fin. Uh, when we look into the fins of the amphioxus, the amphioxus doesn't have any paired fins. It has got some, um, uh, some uh, fins. The unpaired fins, uh, those are the dorsal fin, dorsal fin which actually runs throughout the surface of the body, uh, throughout the dorsal surface of the body. And it connects to a quite larger uh, caudal fin and posteriorly continues with the ventral fin. So the dorsal fins are supported by the dorsal fin ray and ventral fin are supported by ventral fin ray. Whereas, whereas the caudal fin doesn't have any fin rays to support with. Uh, when looking to the, uh, yeah. Okay, the uh, ventral side of the body, uh, the oral load, which is continuous ventrally uh, with some metapleural, metapleural folds uh, that goes up to the atriopore. So these are the uh, ventral metapleural folds uh, that continues with the oral hood and ends uh, near the atriopore. So the atriopore is nothing but uh, it is an excretory thing or an excretory opening where the uh, inserted or the um, entered water will be excreted through the atriopore. Uh, they have the myotomes throughout their body, uh, uh, less than shaped or inverted V-shaped myotomes will be arranged throughout the body. Since these, are, these individuals are transparent in nature, we can actually make out the presence of the myotomes within them. And uh, uh, the ventral mouth, which is provided the oral cirri and the velar organ, they're actually helpful for filter feeding mechanism. They also have the apertures like uh, 
on the anterior end of the body towards the ventral side they have the oral lobe uh, which is an uh, mouth opening like structure that's a uh, that is an uh, feeding aperture and at the uh, posterior uh, terminal ends towards the caudal fin or the ventral fin we can see the atrial pore there that will helpful for the ejaculation of the water that has got in through the uh, mouth structures so these are the anterior or the morphological features of uh, the uh, amphioxus uh, when looking to the feeding of the amphioxus amphioxus possesses a filter feeding mechanism uh, because the mouth of the amphioxus is provided with the numerous uh, yeah yeah these are the myotomes the inverted v shaped myotomes that i explained while explaining the morphology these are the myotomes that we can see in case of the amphioxus yeah when looking to the feeding of the amphioxus of course these are provided with the velar organ at the oral cell right which will helpful to create the water current in turn they can feed the food these brachiostomes feed on the protozoans diatoms algae and other organic particles suspended in the water media so these are the ciliary feeders or the filter feeders the uh, feeding organ of this amphioxus are the the oral buccal cirri or the oral cirri uh, provided with the oral load and the wheel organ so the current of the water the cilia which are present in the oral load creates water current and then that water current will direct towards the oral load and then passes to the pharynx uh, through the gill clefts and later on uh, that reaches the uh, atrial cavity and from there the food particles which are there in the water will be trapped by the pharynx and uh, that will be consumed uh, uh, later on and water uh, will be passed out through the atrial uh, aperture that is the atrial pore well the rotatory movement of the cilia uh, while feeding the oral hood will be extended and the oral cirri which will be directed backwards uh, which actually prevents the entry of sand particles into the oral hood so the rotatory movement of cilia or the wheel organ uh, directs the water towards the pharynx but some of the food particles will be uh, drop out fall out from the water current will be entangled in the mucus uh, which is secreted by the hard sacs groove and then later on that will get direct towards the pharynx when the main water current passes from the oral route, uh, to the uh, towards the atrial pore uh, through the pharynx the gill bars which are there they are provided with the cilia and they keep secreting the mucus so that the food particles which are there in the water that will be entangled in the mucus and that will be uh, directed towards the uh, that will be directed towards the digestive uh, gut so the cilia which are there uh, which are represented in the pharynx or in the gill or uh, over the gill clefts they'll keep beating continuously so that the uh, mucus which is trapped the which has trapped the food particles that clashes out or that uh, passes the food particles the cords of food particles towards the gut region uh, from esophagus or uh, to the gut regions so the cord of food pa- food particles uh entangled with the mucus that will passes down to the gut uh, by the action of the cilia and it is moved from the esophagus to the midgut and then to the uh, midgut diverticulum from from there it will be again written to the midgut while doing this the or while uh, passing the food like this uh, the food will be uh, mixed with the enzymes so that that will be easy for the digestion later on the iliocoliac and the uh, and the hindgut regions of the gut uh, later on the food will move from the uh, hind uh, hindgut and the iliocoliac region for the further uh, digestion and absorption when looking to the digestion of these food uh, the digestive enzymes secreted by the epithelials of the gut 
in the mid midgut diverticulum there the food mixes with the enzyme and the digestion of the food particle begins it is having both the extracellular and intracellular digestion occurs in the uh, amphioxus so the digestion usually commences in the midgut and uh, most of the digestion will happens in the midgut itself and the uh, later on uh, in the hindgut the digestion completes and the absorption of the nutrients will be taken place in the hindgut uh, yeah so this is how the filter feeding mechanism works in the amphioxus yeah to summarize uh, this video in this video i explained the coordinates of or uh, the morphological features of amphioxus and the filter feeding mechanism in amphioxus So amphioxus is commonly called a lancet worm. Uh, it is having both the tapering ends and uh, the trunk region, which is having the myotomes, the atriopore filter feeding organ. Sorry, the uh, oral cirri, oral hood, which is a filter feeding organ, and the atriopore for the excretion of the uh, indigested water. And the fins are there. The unpaired dorsal, caudal, and the ventral fins are there. And um, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, regarding the morphology of the amphioxus when it comes to the feeding of the amphioxus amphioxus is a filter feeder which feeds on the protozoan diatoms algae uh, and the small minute organisms so the oral hood which is having the numerous cirri uh, creates a water current and passes a water current towards the uh, oral hood velar organ and uh, then to the pharynx where the food will be uh, entangled with the mucus and then that passes to the a uh, gut region where the digestion of the food happens by means of the enzyme secreted by the uh, epithelial cells of the gut yeah and uh, these are the references uh, i referred for this uh, video thank you